Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the news podcast on Tenen TV with some last events in our province as well as nationwide. And now we come into details. Ladies and gentlemen, on the afternoon of November 11th of 2024, Mr. Nguyen Hong Thanh, standing by Chairman of Principal People's Committee, head of steering committee for the four conference of ethnic minorities in Tenen province 2024, chair the steering committee meeting. With the theme of ethnic solidarity, democracy, innovation, promoting cultural identity, integration, and development, the four conference of ethnic minorities in the province 2024 will take place on December the 5th and the 6th of 2024 at the Provincial Party Committee Hall. And 250 official delegates are representatives of ethnic minorities from all the sectors and fields of the social life, selected and elected from the grassroots level, and will attend the conference. At the meeting, you and Senators reported on the results and progress of the implementation of the CITAS. In general, the units have collected the progress of implementation of tasks and contents related to the preparation for the conference. Concluding the meeting, Mr. Nguyen Hong Thanh, Permanent Vice Chairman of Prince of Peace Committee, Head of Steering Committee for the Four Conference of Ethnic Minorities of Tenant Province in 2024, requested agencies and units to review the implementation of ASITAS, ensuring the best to successfully organize the conference and thereby affirming and recognizing the contributions of ethnic minorities in the work of hunger eradication and poverty reduction, building the new rural areas and developing infrastructure, implementing ethnic policies and building and defending the federal land. The previous committee of Tenen Province had just implemented the conclusion of the Government Standing Committee at the meeting of the Government Standing Committee with business representatives on the occasion of Vietnam Entrepreneurs Day on October 13. Accordingly, the Chairman of the Provincial Affairs Committee requested the heads of provincial departments, ranchers, and cities, Chairman of the Peace Committee of District, Towns, and City, to continue to create an open, favorable, and equal business environment, rotate the legitimate and legal rights and interests of businesses and businessmen. At the same time, effectively implement administrative reform tasks and solutions, deploy information and contact journals to wrongly receive and resolve difficulties and problems of businesses and people, according to functions and tasks, research and implement according to authority and advise the provincial business committee to implement solutions directed by the government standing committee. The chairman of the provincial business committee also emphasized the spirit of open institutions, broad infrastructure, smart governance, creating favorable conditions for business development, talking less but doing more, saying is doing, committing to do, not saying no, not saying difficult, not saying yes but not doing. Implementing must reduce specific products, achieving quantifiable results. Along with that, creating an open, favorable, and equal business environment for businesses and entrepreneurs, especially building a socialist oriented market, economy, institution, fair and healthy competition among economic sectors. Now we turn to other news, ladies and gentlemen. Recently, the People's Committee of the Nen Province has revealed, commented on, and agreed with the submission of the Department of Labor, War and Wales, and Social Affairs on the draft process to support the construction and repair of the houses for the people with meritorious services to the revolution in the Nen Province in 2025. According to the submission of the Department of Labor, Warm Wales and Social Affairs, the support level for the new construction is 160 million million ton per house, and the support level for repair does not exceed it for 75 million million ton per house. For the house on without land or with land but not yet qualified for residential land to build a house, the People's Committee of District Town and Tenant City shall develop specific support plans, and the total capital needed to implement this project is nearly 18 billion Vietnam dong. The funding will be mobilized from the repaying retail fund at all levels, and the construction time is expected in January of 2025 and strive to complete the new construction and repair projects for meritorious people before April 30th of 2025. In the first eight minutes of 20 January, Tenen Province exported over 15,000 tons of consumers to the world, 
work over 87 million US dollar, and increase of nearly 38% in both value and value compared to the same period last year. Janine Rabin's consumer export accounts for nearly 4% of the total value. Janine's consumers are mainly exported to China, the US, of which in the US market alone, Janine exported approximately 4.1 thousand tons of consumers, worth over 23 million US dollars. Along with that, since the beginning of the year, Janine has also increased its consumer export to many markets such as the Netherlands, Australia, UAE, Thailand, Turkey, Russia, Japan. And accordingly, now will with the change of fertilizers from non taxable to VAT taxable items affect agricultural production and farmers, and this draft revised the law on value active tax is being submitted to by the National Assembly deputies. Accordingly, how will the change of fertilizer from non taxable to VAT taxable items affect agricultural production and farmers. This is also the question right and the similar between agricultural experts, financial experts, and national assembly deputies, taking place on November the 10th in Hanoi. In the content of amending the tax rate for fertilizers, there are currently two different viewpoints. One is to change fertilizers to the subject of a 5% tax rate. The other is to keep the current regulation fertilizers are not subject to the VAT. Analysis say that in the case of fertilizers subject to 5% VAT, manufacturing enterprises can reduce costs, which is beneficial to farmers. Changing fertilizer to 5% taxable subject will help avoid the effect of increasing product costs and better support agricultural production because the entire input value of production will not have to be accounted for in cost, but will be deducted from input VAT. And businesses will receive tax refunds, so there will be room to reduce fertilizer prices. National Assembly deputies also said that putting fertilizer subject to VAT is the right decision. However, which option harmonize the interests of the state, businesses, and farmers needs further consideration. Enterprises can have better production costs, but whether or not the people reduce selling prices are two completely different stories. Whether or not to reduce the selling price depends on the competition story, but also on their strategy. Do not confuse reducing costs with reducing the selling price. As per say that changing fertilizer products to the subject of the 5% tax rate or keeping them as current regulation as non-taxable subjects must be carefully evaluated and harmonizing the two goals, developing domestic fertilizer production and ensuring the interests of the people. And the State Bank of Vietnam Tinh Province branch has just announced that in October 2024, commercial bank branches in the province have complied well with the State Bank regulations on interest rates while maintaining stable capital mobilization and lending activities, contributing to promoting local economic growth. Regarding capital mobilization, the total mobilized capital in the province is estimated as 70,700 billion Vietnam dong, up to 8% compared to the beginning of the year and up to 1.1% compared to the previous month. The credit capital also continued to record growth. The total outstanding credit balance by the end of October is estimated at 104,700 billion Vietnam dong, up to 6.5% compared to the beginning of the year and up to 1.8% compared to the previous month. And this result was shared thanks to credit institutions in the area actively implementing credit solutions and policies, supporting the people and businesses in assessing capital, creating the most fair conditions for customers to increase access to bank credit capital, lending interest rates continue to decrease compared to the beginning of the year. However, bad debt is also recorded at an increase, currently at about 1.5% of the total outstanding debt higher than the rate of 0.83% of the previous month, especially outstanding loans under short-term preferential credit programs. And ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of November 11, the National Assembly entered the full working week of the age section, with an important highlight being the question and answer sections on trade reps of issues under the responsibility of trade ministers and heads of sectors, including the governor of the state bank, 
the Minister of Information and Communication and Minister of Health. This is the content that attracts the attention of many voters and the people nationwide. Speaking at the opening of the question and answer section, the National Assembly Chairman Deng Thanh Mang emphasized that the spirit of the 10th Central Committee Conference, as well as the speech of the General Secretary Tolum at the opening section of the section, is to create a breakthrough in 2024 and 2025, and this goal must be achieved with the highest determination, greatest efforts, drastic action, with the most effective solutions. And ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of November 11th, the National Assembly entered the four working week of the A section, with an important highlight being the question and answer section on the three groups of issues under the responsibility of three ministers and heads of sectors. As the first commander of industry to answer the question from National Assembly deputies, the Governor of State Bank of Vietnam, Nguyen Thi Hong, answered deputies on many issues, including the issues that hit it up the parliament with its own market management. Regarding this field, the delegate Tang Hu Hao, the National Assembly delegation of Tenen Province also questioned the governor of the State Bank of Vietnam. Stated the recommendation of Tenen voters on the advantage of many gold trading enterprises in proving the origin and source of goods, delegate Hao said that most of the current gold trading establishments are private enterprises separated from store and therefore it is very difficult to prove the gold assets left by our ancestors. Most of the gold trading establishments are currently private enterprises separated from shops. The registration procedure is very simple but just fill in information on a firm and they are responsible for all their assets. However, in the past, no one recorded their assets information and was not required, and therefore many times of gold, especially assets left by their ancestors, could not be proven in origin, and at the same time, gold trading establishments were established from family-owned shops, so individuals followed their habits and met mistakes in books and documents. And with the spirit of proactively removing institutional bottlenecks and not criminalizing economic relations, the delegates asked if the governor of the state bank could advise the prime minister to direct relevant ministry and branches to coordinate to remove these dimensions. Degree number 24 has clearly stipulated the responsibilities of ministry and branches for the state management functions related to accounting, documents, etc., which are the responsibility of the Ministry of Finance. Along with that, the governor of the state bank said that the state bank will continue to participate with ministry and branches at the same time, acknowledge the questions of the delegates and will discuss with the functional ministry such as the Ministry of Finance for consideration and assessment. The activity of improving the origin is real and widespread throughout the country, and this were analyzed quite thoroughly by Delegate Deng Hu Hao in his speech at the social economic discussion section and the seven sections. And the content of the question is related to many sectors, so the National Assembly Chairman Deng Thanh Mang requested the Governor of the State Bank to answer the questions of Delegate Deng Hu Hao in written. And thanks to the increase in order, the textile and garment industry exports have virtually stabilized after a crisis in 2003, and recently released figures from the General Statistics Office shows that in the first 10 months of 2004, textile and garment ranked four in the group of products with the largest export turnover in the country, with 30.6 billion US dollars and up to 10.5% of the same period. The Vietnam Textile and Power Association commented that the textile and garment industry export target for 44 billion US dollars in 2024 is very feasible because the end of the year is the peak season for production orders for the Christmas and New Year holidays. On the occasion of Vietnam Corporate Culture Day, November 10, on the afternoon of November 10 in Hanoi, the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism and Vietnam Corporate Culture Development Association organized a forum business in a multicultural environment. This year's forum includes two main discussion sessions with the topics multicultural environment in the context of global business and digital cultural transformation makes a difference. 
at each session, business scientists and communication experts all agree that operating and cooperating with partners and customers from many different cultures is a challenge, but also opposite rich opportunities. Businesses that know how to build and utilize diverse cultures will have an advantage in competition and sustainable development, meeting the requirements of today's globalized environment. And ladies and gentlemen, every year at the end of October and the beginning of November, the tourists from all over the country flock to Mu Kang Chai of Yen Bai province to admire the wonderful scenery of the land and sky and immerse themselves in the daily life of the local people here. Not only the beauty of the terrace fields and the sea of the white clouds on the top of Cao Phá Pass attracts tourists, but a simple life and unique cultural identity are the tourism products that really attract tourists also. Mang Mu Khon Hau Sin Mang Mu Village of Mo Ye Commune was formed from the daily working life of the Hmong ethnic people in the highlands of Mu Kang Chai, and over the years with many creative decorations, Mang Mu Khon Hau has become an attractive tourist destination for many domestic and also international tourists. They are very happy, very practical, and close to nature. They make their own food, see, and seal their own clothes with a very interesting and great way of life. I hope they will preserve this way of life for a long time. When tourists come to Mang Mu Corn House, in addition to checking in and taking photos, everyone can also experience Biswa's painting of fabric. And many tourists like paint traditional Hmong patterns, so it is quite difficult for the tourists, so I have to teach them meticulously and in detail. However, many tourists are creative and like to paint the landscape roads and paths here, and was encourage tourists to paint whatever they like. Not only Mang Mu Corn House, Mo Ye Commune also has many other unique tourism products, such as bamboo forest, apricot water wall, rice hammock, terrace field, which have attracted hundreds of thousands of visitors to visit and experience every year. The homestay of the Hmong ethnic people are located across the mountain slopes, with windows facing the terrace fields and looking down on the vast green valley, also attracting many tourists to come and relax. And that's all for today's TTV News. Thank you for being with us and goodbye for now.